Welcome to another C++ video. In today's video, we'll be going over the parts of a C++ program and trying to understand what each line of code does. So C++ programs have parts that serve a specific purpose. So in the same way that the human body has parts that do specific things, like the hand is used to hold and whatnot, this is the same case with a C++ program. Each part of the program has got a particular purpose. Uh, to better understand what each uh, part of a C++ program does, we are going to go over a simple program. So we'll start with include. Okay, and no, not 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 include. Let me start a little bit differently in this video. So we'll start with a double forward slash. Then getting to understand the parts of a C++ program. Then after that, we then put include iOS stream using namespace std, the main function, the return, and what we'd want to print to the screen. So now let's examine the code which had typed in line by line. Let's examine the code line by line, leaving no stone or line unturned. And we'll start with a double forward slash. So what does it mean? The double forward slash marks the beginning of a comment. And what's a comment in programming? Comments are lines of code that the compiler completely ignores. So whenever the compiler meets a line, we start with a double slash or the, or at the beginning of a double slash, it nods everything to the right of the double slash is a comment. So why are comments important if the compiler ignores them? Well, comments make it easy for you to explain what a particular line of code is doing or what a given uh, set of lines of code is doing. And these explanations help make it easier for you to collaborate with others. And also comments help you even though you're working alone because you might write code today and try to come back to it months later and you might forget what your reasoning was for a particular line and if you put a comment it can help you get back to what you get back to what your initial thought process was so lines 2 begins with hash include ios stream and we're going to understand what each of these symbols and words mean so first begin with the hash so whenever your compiler sees a hash it tells the computer to read that particular line of code and execute it even before you finish your code and click run then what of the words include so the include uh, tells the compiler that it should add a special file to your program so the hash to your computer to read that line of code even before you click run include will make sure that a special file is added to your program and for our particular program the special file is the io stream The letters I O stand for input output stream, and this file contains special objects which help you input and output data. And in the previous video, we saw how C out can be used to output data to the screen. Because these files, which begin with the hash and include, are usually found at the top of the program or I can say the head of the program, they are called header files. Then moving from the header file, we can go to line three and line three has got the words using namespace and std. C++ programs usually have several parts that have unique names. And in order for you to name the parts of the program you have created yourself, you need to use a namespace and in this case why isn't the std namespace examples of stuff in your code that you that you will need to name are things like variables functions and objects which we'll go over in later videos remember line two uh in line two we had hash include io stream well it turns out that the contents of the io stream file use the namespace standard so for you to use the special components of this file easily, you will need to use the namespace standard as well. 
then line four uh, is a black blank line and your compiler ignores blank lines and you just quickly skip it and move to line five and when we go to line five you can see that line five marks the beginning of a function and if you can remember from the previous video it marks the beginning of the main function the function that holds our c program to learn more about the main function you can check out the previous video in this playlist now let's get to understand the architecture of the main function to understand the main to understand the architecture of the main function we we'll first have to know what a function is in c so a function can be designed as a collection of code that performs a particular task and there are many functions in c you can even begin to create your own functions however every c function must have the main function as was explained in the previous video so when you study line 5 carefully we see it's got int main brackets then a curly brace the int in front of the function tells the compiler that once the contents of the function are run the function must send an integer value int back to your computer so the int stands for integer and the integer value will be sent back to your computer then after int we have the word main the word main marks the name of the function so here our function is called main then after the word main we've got the brackets and remember i said in c there are many things you can create a name things like variables functions and objects but how do, how your compiler knows that a particular thing you have declared is a function is function should have brackets after their name then the curly brace after the brackets marks the beginning of the function and for every opening curly brace in c there should be a closing curly brace which in this program is found at the bottom c is very sensitive to how you type in your letters so if your letters are in lowercase at a particular point in your program they should stay in lowercase and if they're in uppercase they should stay in uppercase so you can see some of the special um, parts of c we mentioned like the include ios stream uh, using namespace std int and main we can see that they're all in small letters if we changed any of these characters to either uppercase or just to a different case we said our program wouldn't run so we can show an example of this we said once we change the m to an uppercase the compiler won't be able to recognize where the main function is and our code will not run then besides making mistakes with the case of the of the letters in your program another common mistake that i used to make when i started out with c is forgetting to close your statements with a semicolon as stated in the previous video all c statements end with a semicolon and we can see this on line 7 where we have the c out function output in um, let's get to understand the lines of code with an end line then c out and end line are objects we get from the io stream file which we called in line two then the insertion operator is used in conjunction with the c out as mentioned in the previous video whenever you're outputting data to the screen then we can skip line 8 because you know it's a blank space then line 9 says return 0 so remember i said the int on int main tells the tells the compiler that when the when you reach the end of the function we should send an integer value to the operating system and the initial value that the main function will send to the operating system is this 0 because it it says in line 9 that we should return 0 to the operating system so before closing this video we will, I'd like to restate the important characters we encountered so we encountered a double slash which marks the beginning of a comment a hash or pound sign which marks the beginning of 
a preprocessor directive, which is technical jargon for the computer runs that line before you run the code. Um, opening and closing angled brackets. Uh, this enclose the special file which will include in the header. Then the normal brackets, opening and closing or parentheses. These are used in naming the function. Uh, for example, int main, the main function. Then curly braces. These are used to enclose a group of statements, usually functions as was the case in our simple program. Double quotation marks. These enclose um, words or sentences, if I, may, if I may say so, in simplicity. And lastly, a semicolon, which marks the end of a complete programming statement.